because it's a short session today, I think we'll just get started and um, we'll, we'll start. I am, I know many of you, but I am Barb, the Director of Community Engagement here at the OEN. I'm super excited to see you all. This is one of my absolute favorite programs. So it looks like we're a small group today, but, but mighty. We are also recording this session. So if you have any colleagues that are unable to join us today, we will send out the recording link via um, the Google group afterwards. And you can feel free to share that with, with your colleagues. To begin, it's always fun to say hello in the chat. So um, I'm going to drop a question in there. We have Beyonce playing in Minneapolis today. Uh, Jennifer's daughter is headed to see Taylor Swift in Seattle, which is really exciting. And so the question is, if you could go to the concert of any artist, current or past, which would you choose? So feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and share maybe who your preferred concert would be. Uh, I'm just going to say mine is Prince as a Minnesotan. I never saw him live, tried a couple times because he used to, as you may know, at Paisley Park at his home, he used to do some um, casual concerts for the community, but I never made it and I wish I could see him. Oh, Melissa, the Beatles. Fabulous. I would totally go see them too. Great. Well, we have, let's see here, um, Beatles, Aretha Franklin, Ooh La La, Elton John, yes, Paganini. I am not familiar, but sounds Italian, and Jonathan's located in Italy at the moment. Jimi Hendrix. All right. Okay, so, um, well, we know we're here to talk about the Colleague Connector program today. Um, just to kind of start with a little origin of the event or the event, the program, sorry, it kind of all began by members. As a result of one of our OEN summits, we received, there were some members talking in conversation that it'd be, you know, it's really great to connect when we used to host the event in person. And it would be really neat to carry on those connections over the course of an academic year. And so um, a working group was created to put together a plan for some sort of program that did that. Um, and things got paused, COVID happened, and we kind of resumed the planning a couple of years ago, and the Colleague Connector program was born as kind of a, a tweaked version of what our members created. And really, um, you know, especially this past year after having done another community scan where we heard a lot about our members feeling burnt out and really, you know, a lot of screen time and just craving more connection uh, and more kind of connecting at that human level, I think that this program is more relevant uh, than ever. Uh, so how it works really, um, it is an opportunity for individuals within our community to be partnered with another member of the community or another two members for a triad of the community uh, to discuss, support, and inspire one another in terms of your open education initiatives and occasionally commiserate, as we've heard from past program participants. There is major value in that. Um, and I want to be clear, this is, it's not a mentoring program, but rather it is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, opportunity to have that reciprocal sharing where the goal is really just that fruitful conversation, a space to have meaningful connections and deepen your sense of belonging within the OEN community as a side bonus. So um, this will be our third year running the program in the fall, beginning in the fall. Uh, one thing that we are doing new this coming year, this past year we had our first triad uh, in addition to two-person pairs, and we are going to offer that as an opportunity this next year if that's a better fit for you. So um, that is a new option. In terms of kind of the logistics of the program, it's a program that runs for the academic year. So um, September through May, and the application is currently open through July 28th. So I'm going to drop that link in the chat right now. And how it works is that you fill out this short application that I just dropped in the chat, and we use that information on the application to pair you again with another member or two. So while it is a short application, we recommend that you put effort into 
sharing as much detail as possible because that really helps us um, do our best at pairing. And then we pair folks based on perhaps complementary open education goals or skills. If someone has, you know, evaluation skills and someone else mentions that they want to grow in that area, uh, we might pair folks that way. We look at the type of your institution. If someone mentions they want to be paired with someone from a similar type of uh, institutional setup, we do our best to do that. Or perhaps someone who shares a similar job title. Um, and again, it just depends on the cohort of folks that we have together. Um, and then we would let you know what your pair, who your pairing is in August. And then to kick off of the program, all of our participants in the cohort come together in September to have a meeting where we talk about norms and expectations for participating in the program. And you have a chance to then meet in breakout rooms with your partner to discuss how you want that to look for the course of the year. Because really after that initial kickoff meeting, it's the partners deciding with one another how often to meet and via what channel, if it's Zoom, if it's a phone call, if it's you know just emailing back and forth. Um, and we'll kind of get to that in our panel presentation. Um, but we do recommend about once a month if that works for folks. And then um, from there, we send on our end monthly emails to partners with suggested topics of discussion in case anyone needs a conversation prompt. We usually have a couple of philosophical questions paired with some kind of nitty gritty in the details of the work questions. If you, if you need that, some folks use that, some don't. And then we do have two optional full group meetings to celebrate the end of fall semester in December. And then once again in May to celebrate the culmination of the program and reflect on our experience together uh, to wrap up the year. So really, essentially, that's kind of the basics of how it all works. We hope the program helps facilitate relationship building and expanding your network, building connections within our community um, in a way that also, you know, encourages the professional growth of the participants through their their pairing with one another. So those are the those are the details. I'm really excited because we've got four of our program participants from this past cohort uh, with us today to share their experience. We have Ellie Bernard Wesson from Gallaudet University who was paired. Um, they were actually the first triad but there's only two of them here. She was paired with Kelly Smith from Eastern Kentucky University. Jonathan Poritz is also here. He is formerly of Colorado State University and has um, since become an open education consultant. He's joining us from Italy, so we're very lucky to have him here on our time zone today. And Jen Pate is also with us from the University of North Alabama. For accessibility purposes during the meeting, we do ask that speakers state their names before speaking so that everyone can identify who's talking. And with that, we will begin with asking our panelists some questions about their experience, and then we'll have about 15 minutes at the end to ask questions. All right, so to start, I would love to hear, um, what was your motivation for joining the program? We'll start with Ellie and Kelly, and then we'll go to Jonathan and Jen. Sure thing, this is Ellie. So the reason why I joined this program is really wanting to learn more about open education and how to benefit from that, as well as benefits for our students. And when I had found out about OEN, I thought it was just a wonderful opportunity for me to meet and work with peers and share experiences. And this is Kelly. Um, so for me, um, I'm sort of, my institution is, I would say in the middle of our advancement with OER. So we've published some OER, um, but we don't have a fully fleshed out like functioning program yet, I would say. Um, and so I was hoping to talk with other folks um, who might be further along and then also to offer advice perhaps to mentor some folks who are just starting. So I was hoping to make connections and um, just share, you know, our experiences. 
This is Barb. Thank you both for sharing. I just want to comment on Melissa's chat comment. Can I request a partner whose name rhymes with mine? I love that your names rhyme. <laughs> okay, Jonathan and then Jen. Hi, this is Jonathan. Can you hear me? Good. I'm sorry about my internet. Um, it's a little bad. I um I joined um because I think the open education community is a, an amazing community. And um the I think the strength of the community is working with other people. And I just wanted to meet more people and get a chance to work with closely with someone else in the open education world and i felt like i could share with them my contacts they could share with me their contacts and we would just build a tighter mesh network for sharing ideas which i think is the strength of the open ed community and the oen in particular so i just wanted to want to build my social network hi this is jen um so mine was a little different um I am a graduate of the Open Education Network's Certificate in OER Librarianship Program. And then after that, my university librarian did, I think, the first Colleague Connector Program. And he wasn't very well versed in open education, but he did it so he could learn more so that he could talk to me <laughs> about open ed education. And um, he loved it so much. And I felt like he came away with so many great ideas. I was like, you know, I think I could benefit from this as well. So I, that's why I, I joined it because like Jonathan, I wanted to have that connection and I wanted to have somebody to, to share ideas with. Um, Cause I feel like anytime I talk to anybody about open education, I, I learn as much as I teach, I think, because we all come from such different places. Um, and there's so many great ideas out there that there's just not enough, uh, you know, time in the day to try. But I always love hearing about different things that are working on different campuses for different populations and trying to figure out how I can interpret those on my campus and try them on my campus. This is Barb. Thank you all for sharing. And Jen, that kind of along with the difference, it's also pointing out that many people join the program for many different reasons and, and get something out of it in a different way, too. So. Thank you all. I think to highlight Jonathan's comment about the open community and the OEN in general, um, each other is, I think, our best asset, really. So I love that this program is an opportunity to, to help you kind of get to know the others here. And then Jen also pointed out, um, you know, having kind of gone through it at different times with a colleague, we did have two colleagues at the same university the first year who were both in the Colleague Connector program at the same time, paired with different people. Um, but they talked about how that was a really neat experience. And then within their team, the two of them would talk about what they were learning from their partners. Um, so just something to consider if you're thinking about the program, maybe there's someone you might invite from your own institution. And there's um, sounds like there's benefits from that too. Okay, so we're going to have a little fun now with our next question. Um, panelists, can you describe uh, if you brought a gift today that is a visual representation of your experience with this program, please drop it in the chat along with a description of um, what that looks like. Uh, maybe actually we'll start, I'll start with um, Kelly. I believe you have one. Kelly, could you drop yours in the chat? And then- This is Kelly. Yes. I don't have a written description, but I can describe it. So my GIF, GIF, I always forget how to say it is um, a cat in a sink licking just the dripping water that's dripping and it says I've been busy and um, it's kind of a sad reflection Ellie will know I, I couldn't make it to a lot of the meetings I think that maybe I made it to a third or a half of the meetings that we had um, which made me really sad because whenever I was able to go we had great conversations um, so I, I was just going to say that's a point in favor of a triad because if one can't make it, you know, can't make it work, you can still have a good discussion. So um, that's that's mine. My, my I, I was really busy last year. <laughs> this is Barb. Thank you, Kelly. I am laughing out loud over here. And also, it's a good point that about the triads, and also about you know, this program is what you want it to be. And if you have, if you're very busy, write that in your application and maybe there's someone else who's busy and you're planning to only meet every other month, we can make that pairing happen and 
we can make it work within within your schedules because I know everyone's feeling the crunch these days. Okay, Ellie, would you like to follow up with your GIF if you've got one? Sure. I'll post it now. So this is Ellie and my gift GIF is two women together. And they're both saying something at the same time and about um, you and me both. And it, it kind of represented um, coming from the same place, being excited and frustrated and feeling all those kind of emotions, um, the same as my partner. This is Barb, thank you, that one also wonderful. We heard that a lot from our first cohort as well of having someone who is experiencing very similar things, even within a different context of you, um, can just be so helpful to commiserate sometimes and not feel alone in the work, even if you're the only open education person at your institution. Um, Jen, if you wanna share yours next and then we'll go with Jonathan. So one of my favorite shows is Schitt's Creek and, <laughs> and I love uh, Moira Rose and I love this quote of hers, which is when one of us shines, all of us shine. And, um, and I like it because Moira is such a self-centered character uh, in general. And I feel like a lot of times we get kind of stuck in our own bubble and we only think about the work that we're doing and the things that have to happen on our campus. But being part of the colleague connector, sort of like in this instance with Mora, she had to help other people shine with the work that she was doing. And it's it's a really good reminder for me um, because a lot of times I feel like I'm the only one who's trying to do this work on my campus or in my state. And it's really great to connect with other people and realize that we're all in this together and working together, we can all kind of shine. So. This is Barb. Thank you so much, Jen. Always love a good Shit's Creek reference. Go ahead, Jonathan. Um, I'm always the geekiest person in the room, um, and I I don't I don't really know how to do GIFs, but I do know the file format, the image file format GIF, and so I just found an image. Um, unfortunately, it's openly licensed, and it's just a picture of us. They're called sociograms. They're pictures that represent societies with connections between people. And I just, again, this is on the theme of um, my bringing us a set of connections and my partner bringing a set of connections and together we can form bridge ties between these two sets of connections. And also sociograms don't have to be people, they can be ideas. And so they, my partner had a ton of ideas that I had never thought of and she was able to teach me a ton and I hopefully taught her a little bit as well. This is Barb. Thank you, Jonathan. I love that. Uh, and I love the imagery too of like the snowball effect. Like it starts and then it goes to one idea or person and you never really know where it's going to go next. Okay, so this now, the next couple of questions, if anyone just wants to jump, jump in on the panel and answer, go right ahead. The first question, what has been the most beneficial aspect of connecting with your partner? This is Jen. Um, I would say that um, it was really great. The person that I was connected with was uh, at a university that was a little bit bigger than mine and had a ton of more staff and faculty than we do. They had a completely different structure, but they also had a completely similar set of struggles in some areas and then some completely unique um, you know, uh, opportunities and threats to their program. And it was really just interesting to kind of compare where we both were at and the different things and the ideas that we could bounce off of each other of like, well, you tried that here, maybe you should try this. Um, you know, this worked for me, did this work for you? And it was just really great to have, you know, you go to conferences and you, and you, you participate in things like the open education, you know, librarianship program, and you learn kind of the nuts and bolts and you hear like the big picture ideas, but it's really great to be able to, on occasion, sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody who is focused on the same work that you're focused on about the, the, the struggles and the triumphs that you have. And to have somebody who really understands, um, 
but it isn't particularly invested in your program and can look at it with an objective eye. This is Ellie. I just wanted to add um, one comment. One of the benefits with our our pairs, um, we each were coming from a neutral place. You know, I was able to express my frustrations or my emotions about a problem, and then Kelly would um, offer some information and a different perspective. So that helped to see that different perspective to again, like step back and see something from a different view. This is Barb. Thank you both for sharing that. I think um, I've heard this from a lot of past participants and I see Jen agreeing in the chat as well. Just the freshness that it brings. Again, as someone mentioned earlier, just we get so into the work that we're doing and kind of the tracks that we're in or the, even like you said, Ellie, the emotions that we're around or our environment at work to mix that up um, can be so helpful and really help um, influence creativity or bring us back to that space of different thinking. Okay, another question. Um, I would love to hear from you, Jonathan. What surprised you most about participating in the program? This is Jonathan. I have to leave my camera off. I have slow internet today. Um, I, I think this is going to sound horrible about me, but I, what surprised me was how much I had to learn um, the person I was paired with was relatively new in open education, um, but she was so, so thoughtful and so creative and had so many good ideas. I thought, I'm an old hand. I know how to do these things. And the, the cool thing about one of the cool things about the program, I could have used this in the previous question, was that it, it lasted a long time. It, it wasn't like a five minute conversation in the hallway at a conference. It was it was an hour long conversation that happened every month for many months. So we had a chance to really get quite deep into some things. And my partner had some amazing ideas about open education, about teaching, about um, working with her colleagues. And so I felt the thing that, that surprised me somewhat was how much I learned. Um, I, I went I think three or four times I got off of a call with her and immediately sent emails to people that I work with saying, here's a great idea that I owe to my friend, Laura Richardson, um, of something that we might do to make the thing we're working on right now um, even better. So uh, that was what I was surprised by, but it was wonderful. This is Kelly. Um, well, I was surprised pleasantly surprised by the meetings that the three of us had Ellie um, because because we didn't have an interpreter there we did silent meetings um, talking together in Google Docs um, and I was just surprised by how calming that was <laughs> to be in a zoom and seeing each other but not having to talk like just to kind of thoughtfully type out and I've never had meetings like that and I loved it so um, that was great for me. I really enjoyed it. This is Ellie. Um... Thank you to my group members uh, and your willingness to participate in that, that meeting in an accessible way. Really appreciate it. I'd, I'd like to add that I love this so much because I think this is one of the tenets of open education is that a lot of what we do in open education is making it accessible uh, for everyone and representational of our students and our spaces. And so I, I'm just thrilled that you guys were able to have to come together and find a way that everybody's voice could be equally heard in a situation where one person, you know, is deaf. And I think that's amazing. And I'm so impressed with your triad. That's so great. Well, this is Kelly. Just one thing to add to that. Um, so if you think about universal design and designing for a difference, like that helped me because <laughs> I'm an introvert and talking constantly all day long just really wears me out. So that actually was a great for me. I would love to do that with other meetings. Um, yeah, 
regardless of, of difference. This is Barb. Thank you all for sharing that. And I want to add um, another idea that came out of, um, Ellie mentioned it in our end of year celebration that kind of, I think came out of that triad was integrating some sort of way to connect the broader participants in the group via some sort of app, whether it be Slack or something. I'm still in the process of figuring this out, but I just want to add too that um, that really got us thinking about how we can connect the participants in the program in a different way and also maybe open up some cross-pollination kind of to piggyback off what Jonathan was saying of like the great ideas you left with to be able to share the awesome ideas that are coming through with individual pairs with the broader cohort of the Colleague Connector program. So thanks again, Ellie. Um, as you may see on the application, we do have that as another communication, preferred communication method. So snowballing, awesome. Plus one to Slack. Okay, I see that. Yay. All right. Um, and then one, let's see here. Um, I think we'll ask one more question to each of our um, panelists here, and then we'll open it up to questions. Um, before I get to that, I see another comment in, in the chat about how that, again, appeals to different learning styles and personality styles and um, love that. Uh, so the last question I will ask, um, let's see, we'll start with our pair. So maybe start with Ellie and then to Kelly, and then we'll go to Jen and Jonathan. What would you say to people who are considering participating in the program this next year? This is Ellie. What I would say is to be open open to anything, whatever that person you're paired with, um, you'll get, have a lot that you'll learn from them. So just, just be open. I would say it's definitely, oh, this is Kelly. I would say it's definitely worth the time um, to do it. And um, you don't know what you're going to, you know, you don't know what benefits you'll get until you do it. So um, if you're thinking about it, there, there's really no downside. Yeah, I'll, this is Jennifer. I will just echo what Kelly said. There's no downside. And um, I know a lot of us are very busy and we have a lot of commitments and you think like, is this one more commitment that I have to take on? But the best part is because you're meeting in a duo or in a triad in this case, um, like Amanda, the person that I was partnered with, there were a lot of times that we had to like change at the last minute because she forgot an appointment or I got called away to something. And so it wasn't a heavy lift, but it was when we did connect, it was fantastic. So yeah, um, if you're worried about the time commitment, the time commitment is based upon what you and your your connection can do. And so it's 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 a welcome break from your day-to-day, -day, I think, instead of another obligation that you have to fulfill. This is Jonathan. Um, I, I want to echo what Ellie said. I think that the idea of being open to where the conversation goes, um, so many times my partner would say something like, my chair asked me to write her grant application um, and I did it and I'm angry that I had to do that. But we had a really interesting conversation at that point about the things that my partner does and the way my partner can take some time for herself or, so I'm just saying, I think the idea of being open to wherever it goes. And I, so Barb sends these wonderful prompts every month, which is really interesting because they were great. I'm really glad we got them. I don't think we ever answered any of the prompts in our conversations. They kind of spurred us to be thinking about things, but um, they were not the specific, you know, we were bad students. We didn't answer the assignment. Um, but I think, as Ellie said, being open at that point was a good starting point um, to jump off of. So I would just say, think about those things as you go forward. This is Barb. Thank you all. And don't worry, Jonathan, you are not a bad student. They're optional assignments. Um, 
<laughs> and really they're more of a security blanket if you're just blanking out on what to talk about with your person, particularly in the first couple months as you're getting to know one another. So thank you. And I, I really, I love just, I'm hearing and the spirit of open and this program just really like helps you embrace that and encourages you to embrace that and, and see where thing goes. I think that is exciting to hear that it um, kind of becomes its own thing. And I, we, we talk about that in our kickoff meeting in terms of expectations with, with your partner and for the experience. And I just really appreciate that emphasis on being open. I do also want that um, sparks, you know, a couple other things that I've heard as well, both with this group and last year when we were talking about it is um, going into the experience, I think a lot of folks see the benefit in talking to somebody that's got similar things happening or a, at a similar institution, what have you. But what I hear a lot is also, and I've heard it today too, um, the benefit of these, the difference. So if you are paired with someone who on paper might not look uh, as similar to you as you thought, there is such value there. And folks have mentioned that that um, has been beneficial in the past. So in the in the spirit of openness to um, something to consider as you begin the journey. Uh, so we've got, we'll take about eight minutes or so, or however many questions we have, it might not take that long. But um, does anyone who's here today who's not a panelist have a question and if so, please feel free to unmute or drop your question in the chat, and um, I will let our panelists address the questions as they pop up. Um, this is this is Regina. Maybe you can hear me today. Yay! <laughs> um, to 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 those I'm meeting for the first time. My name is Regina Beard. I'm at Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers. Um, and I guess my question is, to, I mean, the, the, the notion of these connections sounds really appealing, um, but I wonder just, it, it, it was, did anything practical come out of them that you were able to implement or discuss? And not because I'm, I mean, yes, yes, I'm looking for that, but no, that wouldn't be my specific objective here, but I'm, I'm just curious about those those conversations. This is Kelly. Um, I, I, I can't give an example because I can't remember because it happened over the whole year, but I, do, I definitely did get specific ideas um, of things to make my program better um, during those conversations. So um, we didn't, as a group, come up with any kind of a product, but um, but it informed my practice and it was helpful. And this is Ellie. I would have to agree with Kelly. Uh, I don't, I couldn't point a finger on exact conversation and something that came out of it, but how we supported one another in our back and forth and conversation, a lot of the ideas thoughts, emotions that came out of that, I, I stored for later use. Um, we had a lot happen this year, and I was able to implement a, a lot of what, what I learned within those conversations to my own practice. This is Jen. Yeah, uh, Amanda and I actually were able to give each other some practical advice about how to tackle um, certain things. And she's like, oh, I hadn't thought about doing it that way. And and, um, you know, different ways to approach conversations with, um, you know, administration or, um, you know, other stakeholders. And it was really, and it's really beneficial, not just to get the ideas from them, but just to bounce your ideas off of them. Again, like we said before, with people who don't have a vested interest in what's happening on your campus, other than the fact that you're advancing open, it's really great to get that kind of outsider's perspective of what, what would you think if somebody approached you with this idea? So I found that incredibly beneficial. This is Barb. Thank you all for sharing. I want to add, we had a, a pair who were both from Big Ten institutions, and they shared in our end of year event that they actually created a group of open educational librarians from 
or group four open education librarians from Big Ten universities. So they created their own kind of um, support group, um, more extended colleague connector program within, within the Big Ten as a result of participating in the program. I also love Melissa's question in the chat. Um, anybody have a specific example of wine and cheese? Read how that is written. Um, commiseration, fun, funny, you speak open connections that you experience, love a good excuse for workday, wine and cheese. This is Kelly. I don't know if this exactly fits, but one conversation in particular I remember we had, Ellie, was about um, the potential for the work that we're doing, the social justice implications and sort of um, like anti-capitalist work that we're doing. So we we got into a little bit of a political discussion that was kind of fun. And um, so, yeah, we definitely had conversations like that. And also, um, I remember learning that Ellie is uh, wanting to write a book. And so I'm curious at some point to hear a follow-up on that, so. I will say this is Jennifer. Uh, we talked, uh, Amanda and I talked about legislation in particular because Texas has uh, actual OER legislation and um, and it's something that I'm trying to get a grassroots effort in Alabama started to to get um, legis some legislation around funding for OER because funding is so precarious here. Um, but we did talk about some of the political climate around funding and how the conversations about equity have to be focused on cost rather than other forms of equity because of the political climate in Southern states and, and, and the positives and negatives about the legislation that they've had in Texas. And this is Ellie, just to respond briefly to Kelly's comment, still working on the book. <laughs> no updates, no progress quite yet. <laughs> This is Barb. Any other questions? I there was a question about what is the date for the the whole group September kickoff meeting. That's something that we determine once the group is intact. We send out a doodle poll to make sure that as many people as possible can attend that. So, TBD. But I love that we might be already like planning to put things on our calendars, potentially. Well, um, let's see. Yes, months ahead. Looking forward to September. Same here. Any other um, any other questions or for panelists, any other kind of wrap up comments as we're coming to a close here that you're like, ooh, just thought of this, would love to share or any final words on your takeaway from the experience participating in this program, which I will add, as Ellie said, she said, looking forward to September. We have a number of folks who are continuing on in the program um with some with the same partner and some with different partners so um to speak also to Jonathan's comment about the longevity of the interaction and the relationship you can even participate more than one year with the same person with a different person um and I think that's always a good indicator that the connections that are made in this program are so positive um, that there are people who do want to continue but to come back to what I was saying before, I asked a question and then I spoke. Um, anyone want to wrap up with any final comments, panelists? This is Jonathan. Um, maybe I could say, I think um, it's easy to get depressed talking about the political climate and things. It's easy and talking about funding. I, I've been working recently with the Open Oregon folks, and they really tried to get funding for next year to continue there, and the legislature just shut it down. So it's easy to get depressed um, in this work. But I think that one of the great things I really enjoyed about working with my partner is she had such a different perspective on things. The things she was depressed about, I wasn't depressed about, and we I could say share some of my optimism the things I was depressed about, she was less depressed about, she could give me some good stories about things. So it was a very, you know, this is a very supportive community in general, but I think have, building a longer term um, relationship like this that then can be supportive can, can, can be really 
can give you a reason to keep fighting these battles, which are, are such an uphill battle, and they seem to get steeper every time we, we look away. So um, that was a good part for me. This is Barb. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, we definitely, it's great to have someone to to fill in with that energy sometimes when you just don't have any more and vice versa and be able to cheer one another on like that. Um, and Ellie, I laughed, giggled out loud at your gift that you shared in the chat. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, well, I do want to point out, I did um, drop the link, I'll do that again, to the application in the chat. The applications are open through Friday, July 28th, so you still have some time to think about this and maybe put some thought into your application. Again, that is the only information that we use to, to pair participants with one another, so encouraging you to be thoughtful in reflecting on, you know, what, what your hopes are for the program or what you want to connect on and then sharing that information so that we can do our best to, to pair you with another person. If you do have any other questions, um, if that percolates and they pop up, I'm just going to drop my email in the chat as well. You can always feel free to email me. And then I just want to thank our panelists once again for sharing today, taking the time out of your schedules to do so. Um, and I really appreciate your input. So wishing everybody a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for just embodying the OEN here, like wanting to be connecting with others and your enthusiasm around that. So have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thanks for joining.